Good evening. Welcome to Sunday Night Satsang with myself, John Homewood, and... Michelle. Hi, everybody. Hi, hi. Welcome. Welcome to this time of centering, this time of reconnecting, reconnecting with the, the group of lovely people who meet here, but also reconnecting with ourselves, with the deeper essence of being. And that is the hmm, topic for tonight. Let it be. So we're going to be looking at let it be, let it be, let it be. That most beautiful statement uh, made by the Beatles, John Lennon in particular, let it be. Beautiful. So that's what we're going to be looking at tonight. So as usual, uh, we'd like to know who we're talking to. Thank you for the hearts already. We love getting the hearts. So if you're joining, um, you uh, are most welcome to send us hearts. And also just type up your name in the comment section. It, it really does, that interaction really does help get the satsang to a broader audience. And if you have any questions or comments while we speak tonight, please, please type them up as we go. We don't always get a chance to to um, communicate with you while we're talking or read the messages while we're talking, but we do get back to everyone afterwards. But it also helps us know there's people out there. Yeah. <laughs> just if we're not speaking to a vacuum. And thank you for the more hearts. Thank you for the hearts. We appreciate that. Thank you. Thank Hello, you. Sharon. Well, let us know who you from Pai Town. Are and where you're from. Do you think they eat pies in Pai Town? Pai Town. <laughs> it's Pine Town. Yeah, a place I lived Pretty for. Pai I lived for about six, seven years. Yeah, I had a Pai Sonia, Pai. had a Janet. Also from Pai Town. I, Pai also Pai from Pai Pine Town. Yes. Hello, Claire. Hello, Sandra. Sandra. From Cowiesville. Yes. People from KZN. And Marlene's there. I see Claire's yeah. there. Yeah. And Birgit. Birgit. We know Birgit. She lives in Lysdale. Mm -hmm. She lives where we're staying. Yeah. We're staying with Birgit. We're staying with Birgit, yeah. And thank you, Birgit, for providing a beautiful venue for us to do the satsang at. Thank yeah, you. I wish you could see it. It's actually in the middle of these beautiful, beautiful. trees. Yeah. It's just like a, what do they call it, a sunny... Yeah. Um, it's almost semi-tropical, yeah. yeah. Subtropical, yeah. 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 So welcome, everyone. Welcome. And let's start this evening, as we always do, by bringing ourselves fully into this place, this time, this time. Happiness. The only problems that we have, believe it or not, are that we are not in this place, and not in this time. We're in another place and another time in our heads. And that creates all the problems that we have in life. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but it actually is true. So let's just spend a moment bringing ourselves into this moment. Hello, Maria, our ex-next-door neighbour from Lakeside, yes. So let's just gently settle ourselves in, into our physical bodies, into this place. And uh, you might like to close your eye for this. Eyes, we don't prescribe that. You can do an open eye meditation, just as powerful. We always light a beautiful candle, which we have tonight. Um, it's a symbol of presence. Uh, the candle is, is very much light and presence. Uh, the flame of the candle, if you look at the flame of the candle, it's a plasma, and that plasma is always present, just present here and now, in this moment. So gently, we might like to close our eyes and just bring our awareness out from the stories of past and future and into the present moment. And one of the tools that we use to do that is the breath. And as we do the breathing, let's become aware of that pause between the in-breath and the out-breath, and the out-breath and the in-breath, that pause. And as you listen tonight, become aware of the pause between the words, the space between the words. Let's just start to honour that presence, that emptiness, that space. This emptiness, this presence is what's called the transcendent dimension. It transcends the mind, transcends time. While we need the dimension of doing, of human, without the dimension of presence, without that transcendence, we miss the mark, we miss the real meaning and purpose of our human journey, which is to bring awareness into this dimension of time. So let's take a very deep breath in, 
right down into the lower parts of your lungs, pushing your tummy out and then let it all go, release it, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. And become aware of that slight pause before you take the next in-breath, breathing in, right down to your toes, you're drawing the air right the way down the body, up to the top of the head and then that pause again and then that out-breath, long out-breath. And with the out-breath we surrender to life in this moment, we surrender to the isness of life in this moment, just this moment here and now. Take another very deep breath in, blowing your tummy up like a big ball, bigger, 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 and then let it all go, sigh it out, let it go, surrender, drop your shoulders, relax your neck, neck muscles, smooth the lines out from your forehead, relax your eyelids, relax your cheeks, your jaw, your tongue. And just be in this present moment and allow life to breathe you gently in and out, keeping your awareness on the breath but not trying to force it in any way, not trying to control the breath, just allowing life to breathe you but still being aware of the in-breath, the pause and the out-breath, the pause and the in-breath. Just paying particular attention to the pause and the space between my words that emptiness. And in the emptiness you find your true essence, the beingness. You find that transcendent dimension of timelessness, of space. Let's bring our awareness now, keeping our awareness in the body and bring it down into the feet. Just becoming aware of your big toe on your right foot. Becoming aware of the toenail on the big toe on your right foot. Becoming aware of any tension under that toenail. And we just allow it to be. Becoming aware of the little toe on your right foot. And the other toes between the little toe and the big toe. Just relax them and allow them to be. Relaxing now your whole foot, your whole right foot. We bring our awareness to the left foot now, to the big toe on the left foot, to the toenail. Becoming aware of any tension under the toenail. And we just let it be. Let it be. Becoming aware of the little toe on your left foot now. Saying thank you to that little toe. We quite often ignore that little toe because it's small and significant, we think. And yet, if you dropped a brick on your left little toe, you'd really know about it. And if you lost that toe, your whole balance would be affected in your whole body. As small as it is, that little toe is vital to the balance in the body. Saying thank you to that little toe, we become mindful of the other toes on the left foot. We become aware of the soles of the left and the right feet. Becoming aware of the connection with Mother Gaia beneath our feet. We take another deep breath in and we release and as we release we relax even more deeper into our physical bodies in this moment. And now we take a moment to honour the life that animates our body, that gives us this unique human experience that we're having right now in this moment. Ask yourself a question, how do you know you're alive? Bring your awareness to your skin, to your arms, to your legs, to your torso, to your neck, your spine, to your face. 
Feel the aliveness just under your skin, throughout your whole body, in just this moment, here and now. Take another very deep breath in. And a long, slow, relaxing breath out. Sinking down deep into the chair or the bed or the couch, whatever you're sitting or lying on. Just see that your body is beautifully relaxed in this moment. Your eyelids are heavy. The muscles around your eyes are relaxed. Your fingers are relaxed. Feel, if you can, the peace in this moment, the presence in this moment. Now once more connect with this energy we call life that animates your body. This energy we call life that is beating your heart right now, possibly just by digesting your supper or any other food. This energy called life that's repairing billions of cells in the body right now, oxygenating, clearing. bringing nutrients without any conscious control from our side this energy of life enables us to have this physical body just feel the aliveness within you right now in this moment it doesn't need you to control it in any way at all just open fully, open completely to the life that's within your body in this moment, here and now. Just let it be. Feel a sense of gratitude for this energy called life that animates your body. That enables you to move your fingers and your toes. That enables you to walk and talk and hold. Feel an opening in your heart. Feel a presence within your heart. Feel the beautiful sparkle of joy that sits right in the center of your heart. Feel that joy radiating throughout your arms and legs and torso up to the top of your head. And now we consciously allow this joy out into the world. Nourishing all those hearts ready and open to receive this joy. The joy of living, the joy of life. The joy of being. And as we open, so we do become instruments of peace. For this beautiful planet and all who live on her, to more fully transcend the old fear-based mind and step into love and light and joy and peace. And the more we open, the more we succeed in our life purpose. Take another deep breath in. Very long, beautiful, surrendering breath out. And keeping this peace and this openness within your awareness. Gently open your eyes and see how you feel in this moment. 
feel a bit more centered, a bit more peaceful, a bit more connected, a bit more in love with life. Thank you, thank you for being here tonight and sharing your energy, your light and your love with us and with the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you for those hearts. Thank, thank you for you. those hearts. Thank I you. I think we underestimate the power that there is in a group of people yeah. just being quiet together or holding light, light together, just being here and at the same time, the same, different places, same time. Yeah. There's a lot of power here, so yeah. thank you for being with us. It's bigger than us. Yeah. So we're going to talk tonight about Let It Be, which are just the most, the three, three of the most settling words for me that okay. I can ever say. Because if you, if you think about it, if you go into the mind and you think about it, most of our issues come from thinking about what should be, what could have been, what might be. Um, and we spend a lot of our times in struggle to actually try to control things. And those three little words just bring me back. They bring me in to alignment. Let it be. That we have a difficult feeling. What if you just let it be like that? If you have thoughts going around in all directions, what if you just let them be? If you haven't got an answer to a problem, what if just for now you let it be? So we just thought there was a, it was a really lovely theme, and obviously most of us are aware of the song, Let It Be, which is a little bit like an anthem. It is, it is. It's I mean, John Lennon did two songs which were anthems, yeah. Imagine and Let It Be. And it's such a powerful, powerful affirmation to have running through your mind. Even um, when things are going well, let it be. But particularly when things are difficult or challenging, let it be. Because what is the opposite of let it be? It's resistance. You say no to life. And the moment you say no to life, you're negating the life energy within you. Because there is no separation in the life in you and the life in the world around you. And when you negate that, when you build a barrier between you and life, you actually imprison yourself in a false sense of self, a, self, a false sense of identification. You actually build a prison for yourself. And this time of transcendence, this time of awakening, is a time of <clears throat> diminishing, dissolving those world walls we have around us of separation. Fear is a perception of separation, while love is a perception of inclusion and oneness. And I believe the time that we're going through now is a time of stepping out of that perception of separation, out of the sense of fear, into the sense of connection, into love. Mm. And this month, you know, uh, November month, is always quite, a, quite an intense month for many people. Yeah. It's a month where astrologically, energetically, a lot of stuff comes to the surface for many people. The shadow might come out stronger for many, for many people. There might be more conflict, there might be more struggle, there might be more resistance. Um, the sun is in the sun of Scorpio. Scorpio is a fixed water sign, it's fixed. There's stubbornness there, there's holding on. And if we can actually let go rather than hold on, let things be, it actually starts to calm everything down. Because at the moment, obviously our world is in strife. There's a lot of war, there's a lot of conflict all over the place, wherever you seem to look. So how can we uh, contribute to the solution? And the solution is not to engage in the conflict. The solution is not to take sides in the conflict. So what can be a different solution? So for me, it's the middle, it's the middle path of more of neutrality than taking sides in any respect, in any regard in any situation. So that means kind of dropping our preferences in a way as well. Because our preferences would, will determine what we think it should be, how we think it should be manifesting. So what if we were to step back just for now, just for this moment, from our preferences into being and let it be, whatever that situation is. 
So if you just for imagine, for a second imagine that you have something that you really want to sort out in your life or fix or make better. If you had to imagine and hold that in your mind and then just breathe out and as you breathe out, if you could just imagine just releasing it for one moment, just giving it up for one moment, just for one moment letting it be as it is. And you might feel the relief and release in that. Yeah, and this, this time of awakening, uh, this time of uh, transcendence, is a time of stepping out from the dominance of the mind, mm -hmm. with this propensity for judgment, for um, a sense of identity from past, and a sense of mm -hmm. a security in the future. Stepping out from that matrix into the vertical plane. The vertical plane is, is life, it's presence. So this time of transcendence is a case of, of is a time for an opportunity, an invitation to step out of the judgmental mind of right and wrong and come back into the state of acceptance and let it be as the portal, it's the, it's the doorway back into that state of peace within us and as we create that peace and that acceptance within us, that ripples out into the world. I mean, if we have a look at the Middle East and what's going on in the Middle East, it's no accident. Everything that happens in the external world is a mirror of the consciousness of people. And that conflict that is being played out in the Middle East at the moment is a reflection in the mirror of the minds of all of those people involved in that conflict. Um, this conflict has been on the inside of many, many souls for a long, long time. And now as we go through this apocalyptic time, which is, the word apocalypse means for the veil to come down, for that which is hidden to be revealed. In other words, all that conflict that sits within people is now coming to the surface. Those people in the Middle East, yeah, they're experiencing directly, but there are many, many people who are not in the Middle East at the moment. And they are also getting involved in that conflict because the conflict that sits right inside them is coming to the surface and and that's fine and that's beautiful and what that needs is is acceptance if we accept that conflict within ourselves that acceptance and we do that by letting it be so we let the conflict within us the hatred the anger the resentment the the guilt the the fear if we allow that to be within us we dissolve it into the light of presence, into the light of forgiveness. And through that, we create a new world to be reflected. We create a new energy within us, which is then reflected in the world that we meet around ourselves. And I think transformation, which is, the, which is really what we're talking about, especially this month, I think for inner space this month is deep transformation, because that's what's going on. And things have kind of come to a head, or are coming to a head. So those issues, we've spoken about it a few times in this last month, I think. Um, you know, those things that you thought you had wrapped up neatly and put away uh, might be coming back to greet you um, because they need to be seen. And I think that we all, most of you on this group, have probably stated the intention that you want to release old patterns, that you want to be free from the old conditioning, that you want to transform and transmute old energies but I think what we miss sometimes is that that is a process of death because part of us that has actually, uh, we've been attached to as our identity is wrapped up in those stories. So when you start to actually let go of those stories, it actually feels a little bit like there's a part of you dying very often. And there is. And it, it is. Mm. Um, so, but, and then in that, in that case, many people are not willing or, or ready, they don't feel ready, to actually look at those things, the fears, the pain, the, the, the resistance within themselves, and they just want to have a magical transformation. And transformation doesn't happen like that. Transformation happens in, in a, a death-rebirth situation. And we're in the death, in a sense, um, globally, collectively, and individually in our own lives. So it might be in different lives, different things that might be coming to an end or that are shifting and changing. But most people are experiencing something where that old version of themselves 
no longer works. The way that you used to do it doesn't cut it anymore. If you were a very hard worker and you were always this and you were always that and you were always on top of things and you always planned everything, it doesn't seem to be working anymore, maybe, as well. So those very, those very sort of resistant um, patterns that we get very attached to, those are the ones that are coming up. And they're usually unconscious. So they, they, they're sort of underneath the surface. So it'll often require a trigger to bring that out into the surface onto the surface. And then there's, a, there's very often the propensity to try and get rid of it very quickly because it's not very pretty and it's not something that we want to see. And to blame the trigger. Or to blame the trigger or to mm. project onto the trigger, mm. which is, you know, it's, it's a very natural thing to do, by the way. That's most people will actually blame the trigger. So it's not to blame ourselves for blaming the trigger, but that's what will usually happen. When we're in fear, we'll often project it out. And so it's to see those patterns and say, okay, this is my fear that's actually being triggered here. It's not the trigger's fault, it's mine. This is mine. I've got to deal with this. And for me, that's what's coming up for people. It is. It's those old, old, old things. Patterns. I can't tell you how many people, mm. how many clients I've spoken to in the last few months who have said, I really thought that I'd put this to bed. I and really I'm, thought that I'd sorted this out. And I don't know who I am anymore. And who am I? Yeah. I don't know who I am. Yeah. Without that, without mm. that old story. Mm. Mm. Because it is a case of, uh, of re remembering ourselves, and that is, is actually looking past mm. the old constructs that we have mm. about ourselves. The mind knows about ourselves, but the mind will never know you. It will never know who and what you really are. It will only know the stories about yourself. And those stories are changing, and uh, I would um, just suggest that all stories need to be released at the moment. doesn't matter how good the story is or how bad the story is, those stories need to be released. And as Michelle was saying there, releasing those stories is, is actually seen as a death because it's a death of an old sense of self. And death really frightens the hell out of the mind. It really does. But it actually liberates you from the chains of the mind. It's through the portal of death that we truly find life. And what is dying is that which needs to die. The false um, perception of self needs to die as we go through this portal of transformation, as we go through this, this gate from the third and fourth dimension into the fifth dimension. The fifth dimension is, 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 is not so reliant upon time, past and future for our, our sense of well-being. It's more aligned with what we call the vertical plane, with presence. And the mind is the one that's dominated the old dimensions with its identification and judgments that it has with the, with the sense of self as a thingness. And as we step through that portal, we start to see ourselves no, no longer as a thingness defined in time and space, but as being. And being is not a thing. It's a true essence. So those words, let it be, brings you back into alignment with who and what you really are, with the true essence of life, which is being itself. And if we have a look at the, at the, at the topic of, uh, of the Middle East at the moment, and if you look at the real conflict there, it's identification. It's self-identification. I identify myself with this group. Mm -hmm. And there are plenty of people that are not involved in the Middle East, mm -hmm. and yet they, yeah. they, they identify again with this side or that side. Again, adding to that consciousness of division. Of separation. Of separation. Mm -hmm. Where in being there is no separation. There's only one being. So in, in life, it's presence. Mm -hmm. Where the little self, there are, what, Eight, eight billion little cells on this planet right now, all separate, all with different perspectives, but one being. And so to dissolve the conflict in the Middle East, we need to dissolve the conflict within us. Mm -hmm. And the false perception of separation creates conflict. Mm -hmm. Because how can you have any conflict when you know you are one? There is no conflict in the moment. War ceases. And people quite often want to put a, an end to war out there out in the Middle East, for example. And I'm going to suggest, no, the war that needs to be dissolved is the war, is the war within us. Mm -hmm. And how do we do that? Very simply, three little words. Let it be. 
let it be. And from that place that the let it be takes you, which is a place of inner stillness and inner peace, you find any action that needs to be taken on your part will happen from that place of peace, not from a place of resistance or preservation of a little self anymore. It will come from this beautiful, magnificent space of being. And then you're becoming a real instrument for peace and transformation on this planet. Because we have the perception very often that we have to fix things. We ha either have to fix our lives, we have to fix this feeling, we have to fix these thoughts, we have to fix our children, we have to yeah. fix the world, we have to fix our finances, our homes, our everything else, our jobs. And maybe that's not true. Maybe it's, it's actually about stepping back sometimes. If there's something that you can do, then do it. If there's nothing you can do, then what if we were able to just let it be? Just let it be. Just those words, if you can feel into them. And just to remind you of the words of that song. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me, Speaking words of wisdom. Let it be. Let it be. Whisper words of wisdom. Let it be. And when the broken hearted people living in the world agree, there will be an answer. Let it be. For though they may be parted, there is still a chance that they will see. There will be an answer. Let it be. Let it be. And when the night is cloudy, there is still a light that shines on me. Shining till tomorrow, let it be. I wake up to the sound of music. Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom. Let it be. Let it be. And what has the Mother Mary spoken of then in that but the feminine principle? Mm, so and what is the, 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 the feminine principle? The feminine is that holding space. It's that dark womb out of which everything arises. Yeah, it's the and it's to honor that space. Yeah. That space is the holding space. Yeah. It, is, it is the source, the very source of your existence is that space. It's the nurturing, And, and she's isn't it? always standing here with us. She's always standing here. Let it be. Yeah. The resistance takes you away from that holding space. But let it be brings you back into alignment with that feminine principle of holding, of, of that spaciousness, of that womb. And the opposite of that is to go out and, and, and confront right. and fight. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this, this wisdom is saying when in times of trouble, rather than engaging in that fight and becoming part of it and adding to it, putting fire on the fire, by our own preferences and our own desire to control, what if we were able to hold that space? And that, you know, um, energetically, that's the time of this time. Scorpio is water. It's fixed water, which is, if you can imagine an analogy for Scorpio, it would be a dam, a lake, a body of water that is, it's a holding space for water. What is water? Water is nurturing. Water is nourishing. Water is the feminine element. It's fem one of the feminine elements. And it's emotional. And it's emotion. It's holding mm -hmm. a space for those emotions. Mm -hmm. One of the most beautiful things that we can do for one another is just hold a space for the person who's going through trouble to just move through it and just to let it be. Not to fix it. Not to even sometimes offer advice. Not to try and sort it out. Not to try and make the person feel better. Just to hold space for that person is, I would say, one of the, one of the most profound things we can do for anyone. Because what happens as you, as you hold that space for someone, they're able to actually move through it, feeling that they've got a holding space for the feelings that they're feeling and that they're not being judged. So it's beautiful to do that for someone else, but it's also necessary for us to do it for ourselves, to hold that space for ourselves, to allow ourselves to let it be. There's a feeling coming up for me right now. 
can I just let it be like that without trying to change it or chase it away or fix it or analyze it? Can I just let it be? Let it be. There's a sadness. There's an anger. There's a friend of mine said yesterday there was a holy rage that she was feeling to something that she had heard. Can she? Can you just let that rage be. move through you mm. and just let it be like that be. without having to act on it or react on it? Yeah, because this awakening process is, as I said earlier, it's a remembering who we really are. And we're not a thingness, we are the awareness, we're the awareness. Mm. And the awareness is never in rage. The awareness is never depressed. Awareness is not, uh, doesn't feel guilt. It's just awareness, just pure awareness. That's who we are. And this awakening process is a stepping back into the realization of you as awareness. You're just pure awareness. And then you witness the rage. You witness the anger. You witness the resentment or the guilt or the jealousy. You, you witness that, but you're no longer it anymore. Now you're liberated from that misperception. You are the awareness, and the awareness is always to be found in that stillness, in that space between things, in that depth of life. And when you become aware of the stillness, you become the stillness. So as you, as you go into that awareness... I'm aware of the stillness, that stillness starts to, you start to, you, you, you're it. You're in, you're you there. melt you're, into you, it. You melt into yeah. the stillness. Yeah, you do. But that's a feminine process. Yeah. That's this letting it be. That's this Mother Mary says to me, let it be, let it be. Yeah. Just hold it. Don't, you don't have to move it. Yeah. You don't have to direct it. Yeah. And there's a, there's a relief in that because a lot of our concern and anxiety is that we're going to get something wrong, that we should be doing something different. What if this happens? What if that happens? How am I going to fix it? What if we could just let it be? And then, from that place, if action needs to be taken, it'll come from that place. It's not going to come from a divided, polarized, conflicted place. And that conflicted polarized place is the mind yeah. again yeah. real true transformation doesn't happen from the mind it happens from that deeper essence of life of being of who you are which is channeled through through our hearts that's the the real source that sorts all conflict out it's not the head the head never sorts out problems creates more problems thinks it's sorting it out but it isn't we're the heart which embraces and allows and accepts and appreciates that's the source of resolution it's from that place that we need to live our lives more and more and more as we go through this time of transformation of deep transformation which is what our inner space uh, community is, is is working through this month and you're all welcome to join in the space mm-hmm. by the way which is on journeysofawakening.com that's where inner space can can be found yeah, and letting it letting it be in this way is you know it's the water. It's the uh, I'm going back to astrology, but it's the water. And if you think about what's happening on the planet right now, it's kind of fire. It's fire. It's like things are burning. So what is needed? It doesn't need more fire. It doesn't always need more action. It actually needs more stepping back and just holding space. Let it be. Let Just it be. be. Let it be. Breathe out. Yeah. Must understand it's that it's the mind, the mind which gets its identification from doing. The personality, the ego, gets its identification from doing this. And the doing this is the masculine energy, which is perfect and great. Mm. I mean, you know, think of that, that energy of doing this has created marvelous mm. uh, things in the world, you know, like cell phones and nuclear bombs and. All sorts but also of things. amazing things, like buildings and absolutely and art and, and, and all of that. But it's the feminine taxi. energy that needs to be honoured as we go through this portal of transformation. As with any birth, it's the feminine energy that needs to be honoured more than the masculine energy at that time of birth. So let us all practice that stepping back into the awareness that's aware of being, 
and then we become this instrument. We we become the midwife for birthing the the new world because there is there is a split that's coming in the world, a split in vibration and dimension. And there are those who are going to cling to the old world. And there are those who are ready and willing to move into the new world. And ultimately there will become there will be a separation of those two consciousness because we have free will. We have free will to choose and no one can take that away from us. But our work work at the moment is to be, to be, to let it be. And as we allow that sense of beingness within us, we we actually radiate that as an invitation to those souls around us who are also ready to step into that into that awareness, into that light of, of acceptance and oneness. So our presence is the invitation, the ignition for others to step into their presence as well. And part of this whole process of letting it be is to know that there is a higher intelligence that's orchestrating yes. Um, the events around ourselves. Um, life does seem to be random. Albert Einstein said that life is not random. It's obeying a perfect, perfect blueprint, a mathematical model, if you like. Um, so there is this higher intelligence. We call it life. It's the same intelligence that put your fingernails on the end of your fingers and put the nose in the middle of your face and put the um, <clears throat> belly button where it's meant to be and your eyebrows where they're meant to be. That intelligence called life is actually operating through all of this process of transformation. And when we say let it be, we step back into alignment with that intelligence, which is life. Because being and life are one and the same. And there is purpose in all the conflict that we see in the planet out there and also in our own lives. There is meaning and purpose in that. Even though we might not see it, even though we might not want to see it, even though we might resist it, there is purpose in it all. And our, our work right now, the greatest work we can do, is to let it be, to step back into that inner space within us. And that inner space, as Michelle said earlier, is a holding space. It's an allowing space. And there is magic that happens when we hold that space for the world. Just hold it. You don't have to do anything. You can hold that space and the doingness will happen. The doing this comes in the form then of grace. Instead of force coming in and forcing itself, it happens through the flow of, of grace. And that's when we see miracles. And right now, yes, we need to be a portal for miracles to come into the world. And presence is that portal. Yeah. There's a rebalancing happening. I think it was Zach Bush said it a, a, a quite a long time ago. He said the masculine, it's, like it, it's developed this very, very strong wing. Um, the masculine force, I'm not male, but the masculine force on the, in the, on the planet, which is the doing energy, which is nothing wrong with, but it's been exaggerated. And there's been so much emphasis put on it that the one wing is very strong of this bird. And now this is a time where the feminine wing is unfurling and actually starting to, to get stronger. And so there can be more balance on our planet. And so we are part of that. We're part of the rebalancing. As John said, it's not about not doing things. It's just doing things in a different way. Doing things in a more surrendered way. In more a more sacred. compassionate way. Mm. As, and also compassion's coming up as well, mm. big time. Because I think it's also just for us to be aware that everybody is moving through something. It doesn't matter how fantastic their lives look. On the outside. On the outside. It might look just tickety do, but everybody's moving through something. So can we just hold a space for that? Can we show just a bit of compassion and some kindness to the people around us? Because people are battling. And if there's if the people that are clearly battling, it doesn't mean that you have to fix it. It doesn't mean you have, you have to sort it out. You can just be there as this beautiful breath, as this beautiful holding space, hands open, I'm here, I'm not going anywhere, I'm here, how are you? And there's something that needs to be done, which is the masculine energy, Mm -hmm. do it with that kindness, do it with that compassion, do it with love, if you can't do the doing with love, compassion and kindness, 
It's better to just sit and hold that space. Hold that place of peace within you. And I think particularly if there's problems that one doesn't know how to solve. Yeah. Um, you know, what are we going to do about this? And what are we going to do? That's all mind. Mm. And so when those problems and anxieties come up, which they are for many, many people, it's just in the moment that they come up really, really strongly. Just let it be just the way it is. It is as it is. We can't see the bigger picture. What we do kind of know is that we've signed up for this. Yeah. We've signed up for this. It's not a mistake that we're on the planet right now. We wrote it into our scripts. We came down. We said, right, we're coming down at this time in history. It's a very auspicious time. It is. Very, very auspicious time. We can clear no one to blame. thousands of lifetimes of karma mm. in this moment as we move through this. And that's what this major conflict, for example, is in the Middle East. I believe it's clearing karma. You know, it could possibly be that um, a lot of the people who are who are identified at the moment as Israelis were in fact identified as Palestinians in their last few lives, and vice versa. We have no idea. We have no idea. Yeah. But it is a time of forgiveness and of letting go. And the one thing, the one tool, the practical tool, which I would really suggest is the Ho Opona Pona, which is that prayer um, of forgiveness prayer of letting go. And it's actually a prayer of clearing the mind. That's the major um, function of the Ho'oponopono, is to clear the mind. It's to heal ourselves of the sense of separation. Just, um, just remind everyone of the Ho'oponopono. I'll put up the link uh, mm -hmm. below, um, and it is um, just four very simple sentences, which you repeat whenever conflict comes into your mind. Whenever any sense of separation comes into the mind and you want to clear the mind, you use these four simple sentences. The first sentence, they don't have to be said in this particular order, but the order that we like to, to use them, the first sentence is, I love you. I love you is a, an affirmation of oneness. Love is the perception of oneness in your awareness. So we start the prayer by that, setting the tone of oneness. I love you. The second sentence comes from the, um, the truth that, in fact, um, we are participating in this outer reality that we are finding troublesome. Um, through our thoughts, through our feelings, we have created ripples in time and space, collectively, individually as well. And so the second sentence is to recognize that and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for creating this movie that I'm currently witnessing. I'm sorry. The third sentence is the recognition that we of our own cannot, cannot bring resolution to this conflict because the little self has participated in creating it. We have to hand over to a higher power than ourselves. And the third sentence then is, please forgive me. And forgive me, for, forgive me means to release it from my consciousness, to take the log out of my eye. Please forgive me. So you're calling on a higher power, you can call it whatever you like, I call it life. You're calling on life to take this conflict from your perception. And then the good book says, ask knowing that it is already done and it will be done. And that's the only thing you can say after that is thank you. Thank you. So it's I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And do this over and over again to clear your mind, to clear your mind. This universe is built holographically. And the hologram is different to a jigsaw puzzle in that every single part contains the whole. Mm -hmm. As you clear something within yourself, you clear it in the whole. Mm -hmm. That's our work. That's our real work. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Yeah. Let's choose an affirmation card. We've got a lot of cards over here. And Michelle's going to choose one randomly from the pack. A lot of different, different colors. colors. Okay. A green one, you've chosen a green one. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's a lovely, powerful one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's the card she chose. Well, we're not going to show you the words yet. Michelle's going to incorporate that in the in the uh, meditation to lead us out. Okay. All right, so I'm going to lead you out with a short meditation. Thank you for joining us. Settle in. Make yourselves comfy if you're not comfy already. And take a deep, deep
good belly breath and so as you breathe in allow your belly to expand and bring your breath all the way up into the top of the chest and then pause for a moment and then release release the breath out through the mouth as if you're blowing through a straw and now breathe in again all the way in all the way up to the top 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 and then release Let all that breath out. Let it all go. And another last deep breath in. And then a very long, slow out breath. Letting all the pressure and the tension from the day, from the week, let it all go. Just allow yourself to hear my voice and to hear the sounds that you might hear in your room. And then ex extend your hearing outside to see what you can hear outside. Full awareness on the sense of hearing. If your eyes are closed, get a sense of what you see behind your eyes. Or you can open them slightly. Full focus on what you can see behind your eyes or through your eyes. Breathing in and smelling what you can smell. Becoming aware of what you can taste. becoming aware of what you can feel. So just feel your body sitting or lying down. Get a sense of where it's touching the surface, where your feet are, where your hands are. Get a sense of the temperature of the air on your skin. Get a sense of any tightness or resistance or even pain maybe. Breathe in. Now on the out breath, just let it be exactly as it is. Bring to your awareness something you've been dealing with, some issue that you may have wanted to have resolved or may want to resolve, something that you may want to see come to fruition or sort itself out. And hold that in your awareness. You might even hold it in your hands with sort of your fists clenched. And take a deep breath. And on the out breath, just let that go and let it be. Just let it be exactly as it is. Just let it be. If thoughts come into your mind, let them be there. without trying to follow them or fix them or change them or control them. Let it be. And feel the tension and the pressure melting off you as you allow whatever is passing through your awareness to be exactly as it is. There might be joy, there might be peace, there might be anxiety, whatever it is. Just allow it to be exactly as it is. 
let it be. Allow your breath to just be your breath. Not trying to change the breath or make it deeper or stronger or more smooth. Just allow the breath to be. Just for this moment, can we allow it all to be? Exactly as it is. Relax your body even more. The out breath. Imagine a beautiful pink. Very soft, very, very soft pink. Fluid light coming in through the top of your head. Very, very gently moving around your head, inside and outside. Allow this pink liquid light to smooth away the furrows on your brow, to soften the little muscles around the eyes, to soften the muscles around the face, soften the jaw, the whole head, breathing out, allow this to flow down now in through your neck, allow your neck to just soften, move it around if you like, and let it go, allow this beautiful light to go down through your shoulders, into your arms, into your hands. And to rest in your hands, your open hands. Just symbolically holding space for whatever is arising or whatever is moving through you. And now this beautiful pink liquid light goes through your torso, front and back, down your whole spine down into your pelvic area, down through your thighs, knees, shins, into your feet, and down through the bottoms of your feet, into the earth. Feel the feeling of being aligned to the state of being. Our affirmation for this evening is I am peace and I radiate love into the world. Let's hold that as a very strong statement for this evening and for this week. I'll repeat it. I am peace. And I radiate love into the world. I'll take a deep breath in. And a beautiful exhale. When you're ready, you can gently open your eyes. That was lovely. That was really lovely. Wasn't that beautiful? Wasn't that beautiful? So for the week ahead, we've got two affirmations. It's uh, let it be, I think, is one of the affirmations. (laughs) Definitely let it be. Letting it be leads us into allowing, and allowing is such a powerful, powerful, powerful portal into transcendence. And then this week's one over here... I am peace. I am. It's the name of the divine. I am peace. 
and I radiate love into the world. And the word radiate isn't a doingness, it's a beingness. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you. That was really lovely. Thank you for being with us tonight, and we look forward to catching up with you next Sunday for Sunday Satsang, except those on our Inner Space group, in which case we will meet you on Tuesday night. Okay. Thank you. Lots of love. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you.